Hello, I'm Sally Scott. Welcome to my garden. I love watercolour painting. I always have. And in fact, it's something that everybody can have a go at. This time of year is perfect for painting. We've got beautiful colours, spring flowers, the weather's finer. And in a garden like this, you're never short of inspiration. So come inside and I'll show you just how to get started. Okay, welcome to my studio. I'm going to show you now how to paint a primrose. Um, the thing is, you don't need to be as detailed as I've been here. I'm just going to show you very, very basically how to start off. Okay, so I've picked some primroses from the garden and I'm going to do something called a still life today. I'm just going to show you really simply how to make a start. So we're not going to start do it from start to finish. I'm just going to show you just to begin with, just to get you going. So what I've done, I've picked some primroses. The brushes that I'm going to use are quite small. I'm just using a number one, which is that little one, a number two, a number three, and a number four brush to begin with. So you don't need anything really big. Sometimes you can just paint straight onto your paper and the paper that I like to use is the proper watercolour paper with a weightage of about 200 pounds which means it's really quite thick and it's almost like cardboard so that's really good. The reason I like using that is that it doesn't cockle and buckle when you've got lots of water on your page. Um, so high, heavy quality paper, nice and, nice and thick. So let's make a start. So the first thing I think of is the colours. And I always say to people, do this much looking and that much painting. So you're really looking at your object. I'm looking at my primroses and I can see the yellows, a lighter yellow and a deeper yellow, and the green around this little bit, and a very soft brown, very, very light brown for the stem. So I've picked out my watercolour paint tubes and I use these tubes that I squeeze into a nice ceramic mixing palette, which are better than the plastic ones because they don't move about it's nice and still. So I'm just going to start off by sketching in my simple primrose. So as you can see, I've used a book underneath my watercolour pad just to give it a little bit of a tilt so that the paint runs down nicely. So I'm just going to start sketching in three of these primroses. So if we just start with this one very lightly and then these two. We don't need to do all of it. We don't need to do too much detail. One, two, three, four, five petals. So I'm just going to start by putting a little centre in each of them. And then we've got five petals. So we've got that one there, that one there, that one, that one, and that one. And by the way, this is just a, a fairly um, soft pencil, just a, an HB. And then this one is slightly closed, so we've just got to Squeeze those petals in, and again, remember how many there are. For some reason, often you get flowers with five petals. It seems to be nature quite like those odd numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and then one more there. Okay, so very roughly to begin with. And just a hint of the stem there. But I'm not going to worry about the stem of those two for now. So now we're just going to think about that little indentation. This is what I mean about looking, lots of looking in painting before you even start. You really need to notice all these little details. And my style of watercolour painting is quite rough and ready. It's not particularly fine, um, but it's the little clues like that that make your eye register that you're looking at a primrose rather than anything else. So it is important to look at the detail, even if you're not painting in great detail. Okay, so we've got that bit there. Right, that's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to now start with my number four brush. I can squeeze out a little bit of paint into the palette. 
And remember, it's watercolour painting, so lots of water. Just make that nice wash. And the more water you use, the lighter the colour. You don't need to use white in watercolour painting. And that looks slightly darker. That one's actually a cadmium yellow deep, and that's a cadmium yellow, that lighter one. But there's two, two colours. And what I always do is have a tissue ready just to take off the water on the neck of the brush so it can sit down onto your page. Okay, so I'm starting with my really lightest colour first, with the lightest colours first, and then just start carefully putting it onto the page just as a wash. This is called a watercolour wash to begin with, and the same on these two. Not too much detail at all. And on this one as well. Now I'm just going to wait for that to go off slightly, which means you just lose the shine of it being too watery. So that we can put in this darker star shape in the middle. Okay, I might still be a little bit too wet, but we'll try. So I'm using a little bit more of a concentration of paint there. And then I've got that one corresponding with that. So a little bit of detail on that one. It doesn't matter if it bleeds in. It's a little bit too wet at the moment. If I've had more time, I'll be able to, to show you. But just gives you an idea. A bit more of a concentration there. Just to show you how it bleeds in. And then on this one as well. Okay, right, it's already beginning to look like a primrose. Make that a little bit deeper. Like that. Now, that centerpiece has got a slight green to it. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of this green, which is the sap, sap green. Oh, sorry, no, it's the green gold, the lighter one. And the other one is the sap green. Just to give a little tiny bit of a hint of green in there. First of all, like that. And now I'm going to let it dry off a little bit. Like that. Just let it dry. Put a little bit more detail on there for the stem. Really, really light, just an indication. And then what you can do, you can use your artistic license and um, and just fill in a suggestion of other bits and bobs going on around the painting, just to give it something, a little bit of a background. And again, just do a little bit of yellow. Just a hint that the, perhaps there are some more primroses there in the background as well. Okay, and that's very, very simple using a wash, using a little bit of a highlight of colour inside there. Very basic to begin with, but it just gives you an idea of how quick and simple watercolour can be. So next time I'm going to show you in a little bit more detail <coughs> how you can paint um, from still life. And uh, I hope to see you again then. Okay.